All right, so first things first, beyond the sorts of value-based, is we, we got to get a couple technical skills in our back pockets. And the first one is looking at a stock um, or a market and knowing which way is up and which way is down. Uh, so this is a stock quote page I've got in front of you, um, and it's identifying what a bull market and bear market are, uh, and it's telling you which way is up and which way is down. Um, so if you're not familiar with bull and bear, that's fine. Bull simply means that the share value is increasing over a period of time. Bear market simply means... Um, that uh, it's been going down for a period of time. So over here, you've got your bear market bottom, um, where it hit its rock low, uh, somewhere around 87.5. Um, this is the S&P 500 large cap index, once again. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, from that rock bottom point, uh, between 1978 through 1980, it saw um, significant gains, peaking out around this uh, 140 to 142.5 point, um, before it dropped back off. So one of the big uh, understandings that you have to get your head wrapped around as an investor is uh, the difference between fundamental analyses and technical analyses. Um, some investors use one, some investors use the other, and a lot of investors use a sort of combination of the both of them. Uh, so what are they? Well, a fundamental analysis is looking at the bones of the company. Uh, you're looking at the underlying cash flows. How, how is the company performed on its income statements? What's its balance sheet look like? Uh, and beyond that, you're not only looking at those sorts of quantitative variables, you're also looking at the qualitative stuff. Um, so some of the assumptions, it, it assumes that a share price is going to reflect those fundamentals in the long run, uh, which can and sometimes cannot be true. Um, there's plenty of instances, uh, as we know, share prices are a reflection of supply and demand, um, not necessarily a direct function of, under, of underlying cash flows, and that supply and demand can, can get a little out of control with enough manipulation in the market. Uh, for example, the GameStop uh, scenario we saw just a, a couple of years ago, if you're familiar with that. Uh, fundamental analysis is typically more common amongst investors than traders because it takes time and knowledge and it's typically a bit more safe. Um, and it's a bit more long run. It's a real holistic perspective. Uh, and it's what Warren Buffett is known for. He, he's a more fundamental analysis kind of guy. Um, so what do you have to know in order to do fundamental analysis? Well, you got to know what revenue and earnings are. Uh, revenue is simply how much a company is generating from its operations. Earnings is synonymous to net income. Uh, you're generating this much money. Okay, how much are you spending in order to make that money? Uh, another really important thing that uh, has historically at times gotten looked over um, is, is the management. Uh, recently, this has become a lot bigger of a deal because we've had situations like uh, Theranos, um, or if you're familiar with FTX, Sam Bankman Freed and everything that went down there, you really have to know who's running your company that you're looking to invest in. Are they, are they trustworthy? Is what they're saying legitimate? Um, what's their background? Are they really educated enough to be, to be doing what they're doing? Um, and that's sort of a value-based thing for, for the most part. Um, uh, and, and another thing that you have to, of course, look at is macroeconomic factors. Um, so uh, how affected will your company be by changes in interest rates? Uh, how uh, dependent on are they on an international supply chain? And how disrupted would they become if we saw um, more supply chain disruptions, for example, like we saw during the pandemic? Or are they in an industry that has the potential to uh, defy odds and take advantage of those macroeconomic changes? Uh, another technical word or um, equation, I guess, that you got to understand for fundamental analysis is earnings per share. Uh, so earnings per share, whenever I hear the word per, I think of divided. Whenever I think divided, I think of per. The two are synonymous. So it simply means earnings divided by uh, share. So how much does your stock make um, versus how much of that stock are you holding? Um, so if you hold two shares, um, and you make a dollar on those two shares, then it's one divided by two, you're making 50 cents for every share that you own. Uh, EPS alone is not indicative of a company's financial health, um, nor are any of these for that matter. You have to, for fundamental analysis, have a real holistic perspective of all the financial ratios, those quantitative variables, as well as the qualitative. 
Um, P.E. ratio is an extension of that earnings per share, uh, and it's used to compare uh, it's used to compare uh, companies against each other to find out which ones are sort of undervalued. Um, so price earnings, so simply it's your price um, against your earnings. So like on that last one, if if we said that uh, you had an earnings per share of 50 cents, well imagine those shares each cost, uh, let's say, $2. So in order to buy into this stock, you have to pay $2 for a 50 cent share. Well, what if perhaps you could find a similar company with a 50 cents earning per share that had its stock price at only $1? Well, that $1 company is subsequently undervalued, at least probably. Um, and, and that's something you're, you're looking for. You want to find undervalued stocks because uh, those typically are going to have more upward potential. Uh, earnings estimates are a combination of the two things I just talked about, um, all the things I've been talking about, and then so much more. Uh, earnings estimates are things that uh, financial experts take their entire lives uh, to dedicate to, to, to put out these um, estimates of where a company's future is headed. Um, they're arguably the most important thing you can consider before investing. Uh, and, and like I'm saying, they're performed by these people who dedicate their lives to this stuff. And not only are they created by them, they're double-checked by them when they're reviewed um, by financial analysts from banks who literally have their entire lives dedicated to just one or two um, or maybe three companies, depending on the bank, uh, to make sure uh, that if that bank decides to invest in uh, one of these companies – their financial analysts know everything there is to know about where that company could possibly be headed in the future. Um, uh, another thing you got to look at here is new products. Okay, So Warren Buffett is famous for saying that he'd never invest in something he doesn't understand. Uh, he knows that marketing schemes can make really bad things look really good. Uh, I've got an example here of a GoPro drone that flopped. Uh, the hype around GoPro in the mid-2010s was crazy. Uh, they put out this drone, and they had the things falling out of the sky within weeks of their launch. And I mean, talk about serious, serious potential lawsuits going against GoPro, almost crippling their company uh, when this whole thing happened. Um, so you got to understand what you're investing in. Uh, and then another one is competition. You got to know uh, what's the future look like for these brands. Um, Netflix and Blockbuster is a really, really good example. Netflix was doing something super, super innovative uh, and Blockbuster was doing the same old, same old. Um, and, and if you understood the industry that the two were in, um, you'd have had a better shot of understanding, hey, Netflix is the future and Blockbuster is going to die. Uh, if continuing that competition thing, if you want to look into the Nike Reebok story, uh, it's quite incredible. Watch the Michael Jordan movie uh, that recently came out, uh, and, and you'll see the sorts of impacts uh, that competition has on companies.